I don't think anyone would doubt that video games have come a long way since their first inception over five decades ago. With new genres and game types being released on a yearly basis, there's now a genre or subgenre for almost every taste imaginable. And this led to gaming becoming the most valuable entertainment industry on the planet. But of course, this wasn't always the case, and every genre of game had to start somewhere. This is All Out Gamer, I'm Echo, and here are 5 video games that were pioneers of the genre. Starting out at number 5, we have the grandfather of the RPG formula, Akalabeth, World of Doom. Released in 1979 for the Apple II, this is the brainchild of Richard Garriott, better known for the Ultima series. It features some familiar aspects of the RPG that we will all recognise, including an overworld map, dungeons, loot, and most importantly, character stats. The game aimed to emulate pen and paper role playing games such as Dungeons and Dragons. In the overworld, players would receive quests from Garriott's alter ego, Lord British, which would see them taking on 10 increasingly difficult monsters. Calabeth went on to sell over 30,000 units, netting Garriott $150,000 in revenue. Regular players of RPG games will notice many features carried over from this grandfather of the genre. Staples previously mentioned, including the overworld map and character stats in particular, are prevalent across the entire genre. The gameplay loop of entering a dungeon to defeat a boss to get better equipment to beat the next boss in the next dungeon is familiar to us all, and carefully crafting your character and their stats to be ready for the next boss in the next dungeon is what RPGs are all about. So next time you're playing your favourite RPG, just remember Garriott and his brainchild Akalabeth. Because without this game, many of the features that you enjoy may never have been a thing. At number 4, we have a game created by three high school students at a NASA research centre. Steve Colley, Greg Thompson and Howard Palmer are responsible for the first person shooter genre. Originally created in 1973 as part of a school trip to the NASA facility, Thompson later took this to his MIT school to develop it further, and with the help of some of his friends, eventually went on to create an 8 player game. So while the likes of Doom came along much later and made multiplayer gaming popular, this game did it first. Players can move forwards or backwards on a grid and move at 90 degree angles. Players are also able to peek around the corners of the maze, but not able to shoot whilst doing so. The aim of the game is to navigate a maze and shoot opponents to score points. Defeating an opponent awards 10 points, whilst dying removes 5 points. Players of many FPS games such as Call of Duty or Overwatch might be familiar with this concept. The game even featured rudimentary AI opponents for the players to fight as well. Whilst it may not hold up to modern standards, its legacy remains through the decades. At number 3, we have the first ever MMORPG, Neverwinter Nights. Originally released in 1991 by Beyond Software, this game initially allowed 50 players to play simultaneously online. Players would start by creating a character, and then their adventure would take place on a screen with multiple boxes. A box for text interactions, a box that would show your character and party, and another that had a little window that showed your navigation through the map. The game switched to full screen during combat mode, where the player's icons and enemy icons would move around on the screen as the battle went on. The game consisted of 29 separate maps, and each character was controlled by one player. However, the party was controlled by a lead player, who decided where to go on the overworld, as well as where to camp. As per modern MMORPGs, during character creations, players could choose a race or a class, and it heavily depended on statistics for gameplay. And, as something else a little bit familiar for you MMO players, the game also featured a subscription service. $5 for off-peak times per hour, and $10 per hour for on-peak times. So next time you're complaining about your $10 a month subscription, spare a thought for these guys. At number 2, we have the first ever action-adventure game, appropriately named Adventure. Created in 1980 by Warren Robinette, this game released for the Atari 2600. 
and it will be clear for any fans of the genre just how similar this is to modern iterations. In Adventure, players would play as a small square who would travel around the map trying to find a magical chalice and return it to the Golden Castle. And, as may be familiar to fans of the Zelda franchise, players would also have to find keys to unlock doors to get the items. Much like modern action-adventure games, the map would feature roaming enemies that would try to kill the player, including three dragons and a bat that would steal items. And in a first for console games, Adventure also featured enemies that would move whilst off-screen. The map featured 30 different zones, which included different obstacles, mazes, and enemies for the player to encounter. And much like modern action-adventure games, players had to overcome these obstacles using various items. This included a magnet to pull items towards the player, a magical bridge to get across gaps, and also a sword to help you fight the dragons. Adventure had three different difficulty settings, with setting one making the areas more simplistic and removing the bat. Setting number three would act as a hard mode, randomizing the areas that the items were located and increasing the difficulty of the puzzles. These difficulties would also alter the dragon's bite speed as well as whether they flee when you have a sword. This game also popularized the in-game easter egg. At this time, Atari were known for removing developers' names from their products, so Robinet, knowing about this, stored his name in a secret room within the game. Fun fact, this Atari policy also led to the creation of Activision, but that's for another day. At number one, we have what is widely regarded as the first ever survival horror game, Sweet Home. Created in 1989 by survival horror juggernaut Capcom, this game is a precursor to Resident Evil. In Sweet Home, players must navigate a mysterious mansion, fighting enemies with limited access to weapons and restorative items. And if this all sounds too familiar, it's because it was created by the same guy that made Resident Evil, Takoro Fujiwara. The game's use of quick time events, inventory management, and ghost storytelling inspired a multitude of games going forward. The game's plot follows the same story as the film it's based on. Five documentary filmmakers attempt to recover several paintings from inside the mansion that were hidden by its previous owner. However, upon entering the mansion, they are locked inside by the ghost of an unknown woman. In this game, depending on the way you play and how good you are, any or all of the characters can die, leading to five possible endings. With the overall aim of the game being of course to recover the paintings, defeat the woman's ghost, and escape the mansion. As previously mentioned, the game's use of inventory management, low amounts of weapons and healing items, are mechanics commonly used in all survival horror games today. And that's it my friends, that's our list. Can you think of any other games that are the first in the genre? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you like this kind of content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video, and good luck in whatever game you're playing.